on this there. <coughs> Welcome back to the channel. You've joined us at a rather crucial point here. We now have the primary engine buttoned up, everything's connected, clutches in, new chain is on with a new slightly larger sprocket than before. Makeshift exhaust with some hose, which I'm going to put out the door here, and we're going to start running this engine up. We did tease it a little bit last night when it went in and everything was wired just to see if it would fire, and it did. But that's all that's happened. It's not really been run, it's not been given any throttle at all. So this is a real test for it because we're hoping to be in the dyno with this engine tomorrow. Time is uh, marching on. So let's, th let's get this thing running. Well, that was short-lived. That horrible knocking noise that you heard was the piston in the vertical head touching the new piston. It's a kiss, it's not much. I mean, it's, we've done a compression test, still got compression on it, so the balls are not bent, but it is, you can see in the boroscope that we've got um, contact with the balls in the piston. Not sure why, it's only on the vertical, it's not happening in the horizontal. We don't know the history of this engine. It's quite possible that this head has been skimmed before, which is causing the issue. All the timing of the belt off, all the, the timing belt covers off, the timing belt marks are all where they need to be. So, after the three, four nights in the late, eight, late evenings getting this engine in, it's coming back out again. We're gonna take the engine that's good, that's been tested. We're gonna strip the heads off them, cylinders, put the other two forged pistons that we've got, we're gonna fit into that and put that engine back in here. At least we can get it running. We know we've got a solid start and then we can troubleshoot this one later. So it's 8.27 PM now. Let's see how far I can get getting this engine out tonight so we can maybe get the other one in tomorrow. Steve, I need my crowbar back. Oh no! Sorry. Just under two hours to get this thing out. No, it's not out yet. So, if we have to do this 
and anger on the salt. It's probably going to be on an all nighter. To make it one in, one out rather, one in and actually buttoned up properly. So lock wired and ready to race. Yeah. There we go. Not something we want to be doing at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. Hey, she's out. She's put to the corner. Start working on that engine in the morning. Get some pistons in it. Maybe get it back in tomorrow. Hopefully get it back on track. So. <sighs> she's out. Yeah, I think doing doing this in anger outside a motel room <clears throat> without the ramp it would be quite a, quite a challenge. I think we'd have to be beg borrowing and stealing somebody's workshop with the ramp because <clears throat> it would be quite difficult to do. We would do it, but it'd be quite difficult to do. I also noticed that these spars here, that engine seems to be fraction wider than the bottom parts here. And it was getting stuck coming out. It was uh, challenging me. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm going for a shower. I'm going to bed. Good morning. A little update of where we are. One of the issues we had when we were swapping engines is the Sprague clutch on the, which was going to be the main engine, was uh, broken. So we swapped the flywheels over to get the engine in. And in the process of doing so, we found that the engine we ran last year had actually got a lightened flywheel. It had been skimmed all the way back here. Which, for track and road racing, great. For land speed racing, probably not. Or weight is better. So, Sprag Clutch came in the post, got to fit that, button it back to the engine, with the, the gear, put the cover back on, and then we can concentrate on pistons. And before we do that, we will probably, helps if I take the top off, probably have a good look at the piston and everything else just to make sure all the timing was correct. So, Make sure this goes on, make sure it's the right one. Come on. Working. <sighs> These babies will be next.
I'm sure you'll agree that putting an engine in with two people is a damn sight easier than doing it with one. But it's just in. Back to where we were yesterday. Just to recap, this engine is the original engine we did Bonneville with last year. The one that we replaced the, the barrel and the piston we had on the dyno. We've obviously just since changed the pistons again. We've now got the forged, stronger pistons in here, running the same rods and everything else. So we need to get back on the dyno to run all the piston rings in, but the pistons themselves are far stronger than standard. So we will run this as our main engine. The engine over there, we think we know what the problem is. We think it's the cam degree has been played with. It's not standard. And to be honest, it was never checked. It was just presumed it was where it should have been. <laughs> Presuming is a bad word. Um, taking some measurements from this engine, both heads versus that one, there is a difference with the exhaust cam. So it's presuming that it's advanced too much. And as the piston is coming down from top dead center, the valve's actually chasing it and kissing the piston on the way down. That's what it looks like is happening. But until we have the right degree of equipment to dial it in, uh, we won't know for sure. So we're gonna get a kit like that ordered and then we can degree that in. And is if we do find that that was the issue, then perfect. That engine is good to go as a spare engine. It's still holding compression. The valves aren't bent. There's some dings in the top of the piston, but for a spare engine, it'll be perfect. So now I'm gonna get this engine button back up again and get ready for the dyno. But I'm only gonna get it up so far just to make sure it's running and we're not having any clunky clunky noises. Then we've got another week, because we missed a dyno slot today, another week to get it to where we need to be to do the final testing. Nothing's easy. So, as you probably just heard, there's a definite wrongness with the starter and sprag clutch slash flywheel it drives. Now we changed it from the other engine. The other engine, stay there. The other engine, when we were putting it in, the sprag clutch was broken. So we stole the whole sprag clutch and flywheel of this engine. And then all we did was just put when we got the new spark clutch was put the spark clutch, the original spark clutch from that engine <coughs> and flywheel in this one. And clearly there's a wrongness somewhere, because as you can hear, it's uh, not engaging the starter. Now whether it's something that we've done when we fit the cover, or if there's a difference in the flywheel model, model which being a uh, early 2000s Ducati, it wouldn't surprise me. So we'll take it off and we'll have a look. And you know, it's now Monday. And that's what happens on Monday. All we wanted to do was start it up to see if it ran, but no, 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 no. This thing's putting up a fight, that's for sure. We'll get there. We always do. thing is fighting us constantly. Some idiot designed the frame so you couldn't get the side cases off when it's in the frame. We'll be complaining about that to the designer. Anyway, after much profanity and throwing some tools around, we got the stator off. <laughs> so this is the one that we got from the engine in Germany. As you can see, it's been lightened considerably, which is a good thing if you're racing, not so good thing if you're needing momentum, which we do, so we'll probably stick with this flywheel, and that's not the issue. So the issue is the driving wheels behind them. I did look at the part numbers today, um, and who knew they're different. 
So the later models, the deep sump model, has a smaller wheel for some reason. That's why it wasn't catching the starter, starter gear. And they're marginal. They're, they're very, very slight differences, but they are probably overall six or seven mil smaller in diameter. So there's a problem. So another draining oil, finding the issue, bitching and moaning, lots of swearing. So I'm gonna put it back together again. And at some point we'll rebuild that engine. This thing is really kicking our arse. Anyway, back to it. <clears throat> Here comes the fun part. For us to <coughs> get this cover off, which is now off and put back on again, for us to take it off, we had to drop the entire engine now, which means taking all the intercooler hoses off, unbolting the turbo, because you can't get to that bolt on the other side. <coughs> so we now need to carefully raise the engine back up again and catch the engine mounts. Because, <laughs> you know, we've done this before, so we know exactly what's going to happen. Bit of camera magic. It's in. It happened. Nothing to see here. At this moment, I'm taking nothing for granted. I want to see if the start engages. One step forward. I'm just going to button it back up, see if she starts. Then we'll get back to actually rebuilding it, ready for a race. Oh, we are so days behind. Okay, back to where we were. Everything's back buttoned up. There's no oil, water in the system. There is oil. We have fuel. Turbo's back on. Moment of truth. These new pistons. Oh. <laughs> That's promising. Okay. Now we're going to build it properly. But at least we know we're building on a solid platform. Thank God this thing's kicked our ass. It really has. I hope it makes for good viewing because it's an absolute nightmare being in this workshop. But we're getting progress. Oy. We're going to quit this video while we're ahead. It is running. Still got lots of stuff to do to button this thing back up again. And we need to plan to get this thing on the dyno next Sunday. So lots of work to do. Probably need to do some with the other engine as well. But uh, eventually on the right track. It's been a slog, it really has. It's just kicked our arse. But yeah, thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for watching. Sorry for swearing. And join us the next time for more dyno runs. <laughs>